Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be showing you my version of butternut squash soup, or at least the way I'm making it this year. So let's get started. What I have right here is some butternut squash from my own garden from 2013. I haven't grown butternut squash in a few years and I'm definitely going to do it this next year again because I love butternut squash. It's my favorite squash and for whatever reason I just I've been trying other types of squash and I didn't want to mix them up so that's why I haven't done it. But this one goes clear back to 2013 and it's the last package I have left and now it's that time of the year that I really like to have my butternut squash soup. So this actually isn't even just butternut squash, it's actually also apples and I just realized that I had, and I remember now that I had also cut up apples and put them in here. Um, because I also like to add to my soup a few small apples. So now that I know that those apples are in there, I won't be adding these, but I, I'll do like three to four apples this size from our tree. And it's just another way I can also use up the apples, but it also adds a nice flavor to it. So um, first I'm gonna put in my squash into the pan. And there's a little bit of liquid in there already because it was frozen, but I'm just going to add a tiny bit more, um, mostly just to kind of really cook it and soften it and, uh, you know, get it where I want it. And to this, I'm going to be adding some onion. And again, as is my way, I'm not going to, I can't really give you an exact measurements. I just go by sight and what I think, you know, because I my taste can vary from day to day like some days i might want more onion and some days i might want less and uh so i just kind of go by the way things look but definitely going to put in some fresh onion in there and some of my fermented garlic i think i'm going to put more onion than that that might be about a half cup so let me go ahead and finish chopping up some onion and garlic and i'll tell you about how much i put in here That's all I'm going to have. Now you can see that's probably about two to three cups of butternut squash and apples and I would say at least a half cup of onion, chopped onion, and then about five to six cloves of garlic. And now what I'm going to do is go put this on the wood stove and then put a lid on it and let it simmer for a little bit to really uh, cook these really good until they're very soft. I'll probably take you in there once these are about to that point so you can see how they look on the wood stove. And then um, I'll come back and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so I'm here at the wood stove and these are cooked to the point that I want them. They're nice and soft. I can mash them with my spatula here. And you can see I put very little liquid in it. Now some people make their soup with a chicken broth and I'll do that sometimes if I happen to have some on hand, but I don't because every time I make chicken broth, I use it up right away. <laughs> and I haven't cooked chicken in a, couple, a few weeks, I guess. So um, anyway, so we're gonna move on to the next step. And before I leave from here, I'll show you real quick what I've got going on. Uh, for those who are new to my channel and they haven't seen my setup, I know it's dark and I apologize. The best light I have is this little, a uh, strip light right here, uh, LED battery operated thing. And these are my hand crocheted things, uh, handle covers for this cast iron and the teapot. So back there I've got, I know it's really dark, but I've got a teapot sitting back there cooking my t herbal infusion. I've got a pot of water that is always here. It's, I use it for cleaning up in the morning and for washing dishes with and whatever else we need to wash. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, and I also have a batch of dog cookies right there. Sorry, again, I know it's super dark that I'm going to be baking and I'll be doing an update uh, video on the dog cookies, grain-free dog cookies uh, down the road. Anyway, so let me take these in the other room and I'll show you what I do next. So I'm back in the kitchen with my squash, apples, onions, and garlic that are thoroughly cooked. And to this, I'm going to add some spices. I'm going to put in, oh, about a teaspoon of salt. That's not quite a teaspoon, a little bit more. And again, I, 
I really think this is a total of the squash and the, and the apples, even though I didn't measure it up. It should be a total of about three cups. And I know I said two there, but it should be more like three. I don't want to put in too much turmeric because I don't want to, it to make the color too dark. But the turmeric is more for the health benefits because I am trying to get in the habit of using it more in things that I'm not as worried about it changing the color of. I mean, I love using it in homemade mac and cheese, but usually not in a lot of other dishes. But for this, the color is already kind of a yellow, so that's cool. Um, about a tablespoon, I don't think that was actually a tablespoon, but a teaspoon to a tablespoon of red pepper flakes. I'm going to put in, usually I'd put in a lot more when it comes to sage, but I'm just going to keep the sage about a teaspoon in this. Just want a little bit, not very much. Um, about a tablespoon of onion, granulated onion. I know I've already got the, the fresh, but I always, I like using both. I'm funny that way. So same thing with the garlic. Okay, so now for the other spices that might make it more, this is what makes it more fallish. I'm using about a teaspoon of cloves. Um, if you're not a big clove lover like I am, you may want to cut that back to a quarter of a teaspoon. And then about a tablespoon, there we go, it's closer to a tablespoon of cinnamon. And then some nice thick whole goat's milk. And I'm going to put in about a cup to start with. Okay, and so now I'm going to take my stick blender and just blend it up in the pot. Okay, so it's definitely gonna need more liquid. That's why I wanted to start with uh, just a little bit. I don't even think that was a full cup. That was probably more like a half cup. So just a little bit at a time, and this is just to give it more of a creamy flavor and texture. Though you can just use broth or water. That's why I like to pick it in only just a little bit of water because I really like using the milk or the whipping cream in the soup. It still needs a little more milk. So you just go by the feel, by the texture. So I'm not giving you exact measurements, but you can at least see what it looks like as I'm going along here. milk and then what you can do since I'm adding the cold milk in here is when you're ready to um, when you're want, ready to eat it just put it back on the stove and let it heat through gently you want to be you know you don't want it on a high heat if you're using a conventional stove just use a low heat um, for me what I'll do is I'll put this on a trivet on top of the wood stove and then let it heat very slowly through that and you know what looking at that color I'm thinking I'm going to put some more, more turmeric in. Really like that turmeric. It adds just nice flavor and the health benefits are so good for you. So it's a good idea to try to get as much in your diet as you can. Now I like this consistency right here for my soup. Now some recommendations for your soup is it's especially good if you don't mind a little bit of sweetness in it is to add some maple syrup or some coconut sugar that will help really bring out that yummy fall flavor of your squash soup. So today I'm going to put some organic real maple syrup in there. I'm just going to pour in a little bit, maybe a, eh, a couple of tablespoons. All right, so then after you serve up your bowl of soup, I recommend topping it off with just a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. That will just really add to that wonderful fall flavor. All right, there you have it. That's how I make my butternut squash soup. And some other options is to top it off with a little bit of homemade whipped cream and you can even spice that up with some your cinnamon and nutmeg and then maybe a couple of wedges of apples and whatever else sounds good. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe you learned something new or at least a new way of making an old classic fall dish. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.